uh, really dark tactical green. And then we'll do the Blade Coyote Brown. Freaking wicked! And yes, I'm yeah. gonna do that. Yeah. So we'll shoot the whole thing, out. shoot the clip, clip, everything. You should press checks. I don't want an amorphous blob knife. Alright, hip to the jive. Maximum reducer added percentage is 20%. You don't need that much. Like the gold pea brand. We are shooting tap green, right? Yeah. Gold is green. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to shoot it at this point. Aren't we doing the sheet pants too? Yep. We're going to do that right now. Yeah, baby, there it is. The Duracoated Nut and Fancy Special Cold Steel Laredo Bowie and SK5 Steel. I think I told you dudes I was thinking about transforming this into an ultimate large tactical Bowie knife. Something that I think is pretty much lacking on the market, uh, at least at a reasonable price point. And there it is, wearing all the modifications that I wanted to do to this blade. First off, some guys would say, why would you transform that blade? It was beautiful as it was. Uh, yeah, it was okay looking. It had some issues. I'm going to tell you here in a sec what they were. But also, that's not my philosophy of use on this blade. And also, I wanted to do a concept proving on what uh, I am recommending to my soldier buddies. And that is a large style, won't break the bank, strong fighting knife. And to have such a blade, at least in certain theaters of operations, you don't want a bright finish blade, bright handle, brightly colored sheath. It just doesn't go. Yes, you can wrap it in the camo tape, which you see me do in other videos. You could spray paint it, but I like doing things right. I like doing things in a very durable way and a very high quality way, uh, making them appear like they came as such from the factory. And first in line in this Dura-coated Knives update by Nut and Fancy is this Laredo Bowie. Beautiful blade. This is actually wearing the Lauer Weaponry Duracoat. And let me get these names right because they're, they're very confusing. Tango Down Flat Dark Earth is this color. It's kind of a coyote brown, but it's not flat. It's satin finished. Unless it has tactical in the front of the name, uh, you can pretty much count on it being a satin finished blade. You can see up there where my, my fingers are on the back side of the blade, how it just reflects light very slightly. I think a satin finish Duracoat is going to be maybe a little bit more durable. It will show scuffs less than a full flat finish will be. But I'm very pleased with the finish. Love it. By the way, it takes a little bit of work to make a blade like this and transform it. Um, depending on what the project is, it may, might take a lot of work. And yes, I have been very busy in the Nut and Fancy basement, i.e. My, my projecting place downstairs in the shop. 
Uh, if you don't see me cranking out vids, rest assured I am working my butt off. Might be in the shop, might be at my real jobs, but it takes time doing these gear modifications, the gear testing, sorting, trading, buying, selling. <laughs> that in and of itself is a full-time job. So bear with me, but the result of it will be cool projects like this, which really speak to the heart of the Nut and Fancy project. Things that I can recommend, and yes, Duracoat is one of those. Everyone's probably thinking, man, Nut and Fancy, Duracoat, man, you're just going hog wild with that stuff. You'll Duracoat toilet paper if it's on the roll too long. Yeah, I just might. <laughs> Depends. But actually, the reason I'm using Duracoat so much is because I'm so excited about the product and what it can do for me and what I've been wanting to do for years. And that is to change the colorations of knives, guns, and other gear permanently in a very durable fashion. Paint ain't it. Um, I've painted stuff with all types of varieties of paints to include Alumahide 2 by Brownells. Have not obtained the durability of finish that I was after. Duracoat seems to promise that. It will wear. Um, like I've said, I have some knives that have been under some high use and Bugget Nuster has one, and yeah, it'll wear a little bit, but it wears hard. This is an epoxy finish that hardens over time. This one is fully cured right now. It's about three weeks post-coating. Um, so yeah, it's, it's exciting because you can transform it. Now, the reason I coated this blade, again, getting back to why didn't you just leave it the way it was? Because the POU on this is a soldier's blade, something that is subdued. I think I mentioned that already. And I want something more durable. When you get a non-stainless blade, excuse me, like the SK5, at the very least under hard use, it will discolor. Okay, it probably will, will rust if you're in a high humidity environment despite your best efforts. When you apply a finish like Duracoat, you alleviate a lot of those concerns. And as from the factory, and I, it seems like Cold Steel currently is doing this with several blades. There's no coating whatsoever from the factory. You know, so I think, what, the Trailmaster like that, the SK5 Trailmaster's not coated anymore. So, yeah, some guys don't care. I care. I don't like a discolored blade. If I can, I want to rustproof it. Now, on this one, in a lot of my Dura-coated knives, you're going to see I did not razor blade the edge. If we take a look at that edge, actually, I did on this one just a little bit. And I have noticed also, as you prep the blade for Dura-coating, Despite my best efforts to stay away from that relief edge and the cutting edge, uh, and I do while sanding because I don't want to ruin the edge, it seems like it will dull it just a little bit throughout the process, um, so you'll have to touch it up. One reason I was thinking why I should, let me put that back there so you can focus, one reason why you should razor blade that edge is so you do not clog your sharpening stone or your rod. For instance, here's a ceramic one I use frequently. So with a Duracoated blade, if I strike it, down here, I'm going to just fill that abrasive surface up with Duracoat as it comes off the relief edge. Um, so I'm kind of just learning here. I'm deciding which way is the best way to go because I want a really clean demarcation line between the Duracoat and the relief edge. But on some of these blades, you'll see I haven't even raised the blade of them at all. But I'm real happy how that blade turned out. Also, I sanded, prepped that brass guard, coated that as well, and that takes us to the handle. Remember all the specifics I talked about in my previous review on this outstanding large Bowie knife? That's right, the Colt Steel Laredo Bowie, high value Bowie knife by None Fancy. You'll see something like that in annotation. Check it out. Well, the specifics are there. I wasn't, actually, first on the positive side, I liked how long the handle was. Gives lots of real estate for forward and reverse grip, grip options. I wasn't super enthralled with the sharp transitions on the fake Coco Bolo handle, that i.e. plastic. Looks like wood, but it's not on the Cold Steel Laredo Bowie SK5. Therefore, as you've seen and as you see, I went ahead and took the sander and carefully rounded those sharp transitions on the handle, on the sides, also at the rear coffin area, so it is more comfortable in hand. As it comes from the box, this is a slick handle. Plastic, no traction whatsoever. Um, so I wanted to cure that as well. So after reprofiling the handle, I researched and decided on certain grip options. And I could have gone a couple different ways, but the way I went and the one that I'm very pleased with is using Brooks Tactical A-Grip. And that's this stuff right here. 
I've been using this stuff for a long time. I've had a Glock 26 coated in this for about 15 years, and I'm a big fan of A-Grip. I think it conforms outstandingly to the contours of the gun, the knife. Relatively durable. Uh, if you rub it in and out of a holster, it will, will peel off. But it's like a synthetic suede material. Very comfortable in hand, but it's not suede, so it won't retain water if you get it wet. You can clean it with a toothbrush. He gives you instructions on how to clean it. And Brooks Tactical, I talked to him many years ago, so I know the dude. I say it's a great product, except he just overprices it. I told him that years ago, and he just seemed like he kind of got upset when I told him that. I was like, dude, why is it so expensive? It's just fake suede. He's like, it's not fake suede. I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> but it's a good product. It's very thin. It adheres well. You can see it conform beautifully to the Cold Steel Laredo Bowie uh, handle. And now we have traction. Serious amounts of traction. So you get two kinds of cool practicality and just intrinsic good, good looks. And while I was modifying the handle, I did drill a lanyard hole. And this is an update from Nothing Fancy. I think there's some rumors, forum or otherwise, says that this is not a full tang knife. I beg to differ at this point because as I drill through there, I can't, had to go through a nice chunk of metal to do it. Okay, now you could say, well, you know, I could be wrong on this. I'm not saying I'm the absolute authority and I'm not going to yank the handle off to confirm it. But I would think that tang does come in here. And there's a screw at the bottom of it, as you see in my original review, that seems to screw into the tank. So, and I used a small enough diameter there that I hopefully wasn't compromising any meaningful strength on the tank. But I think it just might be a full tank knife. But I want a lanyard on that large Bowie knife for control. I think it helps. Helps for extraction, retention, should you ever need to use it in a fighting scenario. Lanyards are critical in the POU that I want for this blade. Use that really nice OD paracord cord with the centers removed, and then I just put a toggle on the back of it. That's a nice looking handle, nice looking blade, beautiful. How about the sheath? Guys are probably wondering what I did to the sheath. Again, for the POU, I want very low visibility, okay, in carry. I don't want this to be a loud blade. I want it to be very non-noticeable. The mistake I made with the sheath and learned from my mistake is I lightly sanded it. Okay, I do not recommend doing this. It's not bad, but you can see there's some roughness after several coats of Duracoat. And the color you're seeing now is, again, these colors can get confusing. Sorry for the bump. This is Cav Arms OD, OD Green on this one. Still bumping around. Hang on. Okay, Cav Arms OD Green is that sheath. So it's just basically a very dark olive drab. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. Um, yes, sanded that frog stud. And yes, I've learned there's plastic inserts in there. And yes, I'm probably, probably still going to scratch the blade as I put it in and out. Remember, I talked about that in the original review. Not super worried about it. I mean, you can see that some of that has occurred already on the door coat. I don't know if you can see it. It's right here. Uh, expect wear on your Dura-coated blades. That's not bad. In fact, it'll actually make them kind of cooler. As long as you did a good job with surface preparation, which I did on this blade and all the stuff that I do, i.e. sanded, maybe using fine steel wool, you've roughed up the finish, you've acid prepped it with Lauer Weaponry's metal prep, make sure you let that sit long enough too, guys. And it'll give a nice adhesive surface to your Duracoat job, I think you're going to be very happy with the wearability of it. Uh, yes, as I wear this in the belt, I realize that to extract it, it's probably going to be a two-hand affair, unless I use the frog and some 550 cord, much like that on the handle, to secure that stud in the belt of choice. might be a web belt, LBE gear. There's all kinds of ways I secure this sheath. What I really want to do, yes, I'm laying out, laying it out again, is probably make a Kydex, me, myself, and I, a Kydex sheath for that. And I'll probably gen that up sometime. And yeah, now that I mention it, watch everybody else try to beat me to the punch and do it on their own, trying to beat TMP, baby. Yeah, I'll get around to it maybe if I'm motivated, but that'd be pretty cool. Really happy with that blade. Cold Steel Laredo Bowie. Next in line, moving right along, is this one. Benchmade Nimravis. Let me lower the tripod here so you can take a good gander at that. Look at how nice that blade turned out. You saw it at the beginning of this video. As I sharpened that, that jimping up, we prepped and sanded that blade in preparation. The color you're looking at is Tactical Coyote Brown by Duracoat. It is a lighter tan Coyote Brown. This one is indeed 
full flat finish. No reflective value whatsoever. Remember, if you see tactical, at least as of 2009, in the beginning of the name, that means it is full flat. And I coated that sheath as well. The main impetus was uh, to do this is, uh, one, I have plenty of black blades already. Tons. Okay, I want something different. Maybe getting into the second type of cool. Something one of a kind. Every Nimrovis, well, not every, but many of the Nimrovis uh, knives that I see are black. So I wanted to stand out. wanted something different. Also, Tactical Doodle, my son, wants this as his LBE knife, and he wants a different coloration um, of the blade so it blends nicely in our you know, so so to speak, operating area, which you've seen in video many times. It's mo mostly desert areas. Beautiful. Doesn't that turn out nice? Again, the blade was prepped with sanding, with 400 grit sandpaper. That gives a nice adhesive surface. That acid prepping by their own stuff. That was cool. We were not happy with how the scales first turned out. Initially, I coated them in a Veltor. This is, again, a Duracoat product. I'm just talking about the different names. I'm looking over here at my notes to make sure I get them. Veltor Foliage Green, which is a very sage color green. And depending on the application, very nice. However, for the Benchmade Nimrovis, I was not happy. It sucked. Did not go well with the Coyote Brown. We just weren't happy with it. So we went back, and what you see now is those scales, those G10 scales, covered in Tactical Desert Earth. Isn't that a beautiful scale? Now I love it. By the way, those the fasteners, as you can see, are still coated in that Veltor foliage green. You can see them in there. So that's the original color of the scales. I left them there because since, you know, just a little bit of contrast, that's fine. Much happier with this. I did nothing to increase the traction on these scales. You no, know, it's just uh, stock. And actually, when you multiply coat an item like I did with these scales, you're actually going to lose traction as it fills in whatever type of texturing there is. So a lot, maybe I even lost a little bit. I will say that anytime you go with a flat, um, and that's what this one is too, the Tactical Flat Desert Earth is a flat Duracoat, it does improve traction. It's, it's not slick at all. It's kind of chalky. You know what I'm talking about? So good looking blade overall. You can see the sheath as well, coated that brightly color, colored clip. And again, expect to wear on this as time goes by. There's some Veltor foliage green coated fasteners here you can see nice looking package very tactical looking uh oh there's that word again and yes there's a lanyard I put on here opting for a coyote brown lanyard 550 cord I get this from Brigade Quartermaster I love those guys and then I just take the centers out of it so it's much flatter and lighter and then I sew it on see how I did that I just stitched it at the end so it stays in position and this is more of an extraction lanyard, not really a wrist lanyard. And you're going to see this in photos and videos. That's a Benchmade Nimrovis. I really want to get a Nimrovis Cub in the Nut and Fancy inventory. Look to that soon. Nice blade. Just gorgeous. Real happy with that one. And you've seen this one already, right? The Endura 4. Put that in the background. Good looking blade. This is a Spyderco Endura 4. Tango Down Flat Dark Earth. <laughs> It's so confusing keeping the color straight. This is the same color as the Laredo Bowie, dudes. Okay, the one you just saw. Notice it's a satin finish, not ultra flat finish. It's a satin finish Duracoat. No, I did not take this particular knife down to do it. And Duras, I think, are a pain in the neck to take apart and put back together. Maybe I'm just a tard. Sorry, I don't know. But that's how it is. And as I didn't take it down, like I mentioned in my Endura G10 vid recently, I left a little bit of uncoated. Don't care. And then, of course, in the open position, you don't notice at all. Good looking blade, though. And I like the color. Again, I'm kind of partial to the satin finished ones for blades, not ultra flat. They're going to show wear less. That's the Spyderco Endura 4 marching along. Really excited about the next one. Drum roll, please. Oh my gosh, I love this blade. The Benchmade 710 by Nothing Fancy. There it is. Oh my gosh. Finally Duracoated. Yes, this one was completely disassembled and painstakingly prepped for Duracoat. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy with the end product. What's the coloration on this? Well, it should look familiar. It is the same color that my Tapco 1022 RNG wears, and that is Tactical Coyote Brown. It is a flat Coyote Brown by Duracoat. What a good looking color that is. It has transformed that blade. 
And yes, I did a two-tone Duracoat job on this sucker. Look on the back and you will see that sage green. That's that Veltor foliage green. Very sagey in color. And with this Coyote Brown and this application for me, your mileage may vary. I like how it turned out. I just left the screws playing on this one. Duracoated the axis lock. Attached that ACU cord. That's actually a 550 ACU pattern 550 cord. Stitched in the back as an extraction, not a retention, extraction lanyard. Oh, did the pocket clip. Very, very pleased with this 710. Let's compare it to a stock 710. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? There's a brand new one in box on loan from a buddy. Let's take a look. He hasn't done it. He's saying, dude, can you Duracoat that for me? I was like, yeah, for $100 I will. Dude, do you know how long it takes me to prep all this stuff and to work at it? It's a lot of work. That's why you see gunsmiths and knife makers, if they're going to apply finish, and I'm not just talking Duracoat. It might be something else, maybe black tea or whatever that other stuff is, MP3. It's a lot of work to do it right, especially if you decide to take down the device. There it is. There's a plain 710. Still a beautiful knife. Love that. So there's your comparison and contrast by Nut and Fancy. Duracoat on the top, plain on the bottom. And yes, I know a lot of guys will say, oh, I like the plain version. Guess what? I do too. But I like the Duracoated one too. So it's okay to like more than one thing. It's okay to like more than one finish. Just beautiful. But what a great knife this is. You'll see an annotation, my original review on this outstanding tactical folder by Benchmade. It is a part, it remains a part of my best playlist for tactical folders. Outstanding. Also that Endura 4 as well. Next up, yes, there's a couple more to show you, is the Glock Field Knife. Also wearing flat I'm probably getting you confused with all these knives in the background. Let me clear it out here a little bit. Wearing that flat coyote brown finish. This is a Glock field knife. Didn't coat the sheath because that already came in a very light tan. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to leave it like that. It's kind of a nice little contrast. Just coated the blade and the handle for consistency. Again, this is more, maybe not the second type of cool, more of this first type practicality. I wanted some rust resistance on this specific field knife. You know, it might be riding in survival kits in some moist environments. Rust resistance. There's none applied from the factory. Nice, though. It turned out nicely, didn't it? Very nice. Glock field knife. What a great knife that is. Yes, I'll annotate my review on that previously. Very pleased with that. Finally, you saw it at the beginning of this video, and that is the... Cold Steel OSS, now wearing Duracoat, also by Nut and Fancy. This was actually a pretty easy knife to prep. All I did on this one is use steel wool, because I think if you use the right grade, I use a fine steel wool, that's enough to prep it, and then I used the metal prep again by Duracoat, and I think it'll be adequately dur or durable. You can see I did not re razor blade any of the relief edges of this particular knife, right? It's just as it comes out of the nut and fancy shot from Duracoating. I might just sharpen it, touch it up. The thing that I'm worrying about, though, is this thing was already sharpened by my favorite place for knife sharpening, Razor's Edge, by a former employee, employee of theirs, Zach. He did such a great job sharpening this, just put a razor sharp edge on it. So uh, I've kind of lost that with the Duracoating process. Uh, I might be able to restore it with some light touch-ups, but... I want all my knives, especially my fighting slash de emergency defensive knives, to be razor sharp. I didn't do the handle because that is rubber. I don't think Duracoat's going to wear too well on rubber. Uh, on my 700 uh, project previously, you saw I Duracoated the Accupod. I'll give you an update on that how, how that wears. I already see some wear coming on it. That's because rubber flexes, and Duracoat, as the substrate flexes, probably will have a hard time adhering to it over time. I'm talking years probably. And I like the contrast of the coloration. That's a nice coloration. This color right here is a really nice looking color. It's actually a flat mud brown. That's what I call it. The official name is Tactical Desert Earth. Tactical Desert Earth by Duracoat. And look at the, how it turns out. Duracoat still needs to come out with a kind of a paint chip card for all their finishes. Don't you think? 
Uh, the catalog is uh, pretty much worthless for telling you how the color is going to lurk, look on your blade, your knife. Uh, this video will help you guys contemplating some colors because I'm showing it to you in great detail. This is tactical, uh, tactical Desert Earth. There you go. And it is an ultra flat Durica. Beautiful knife though. And I did the, the sheath as well. Look at that. And all of this was meticulously prepped by me. As you can see, sanding. Actually, I didn't sand this one. I just um, steel wooled it. And that's what I recommend now. Uh, initially, I was saying like on that leather sheath of Laredo, I sand it with 400. Probably just steel wool is all you need. Prep it, clean it, degrease it really well. The way I degrease these guys isn't with brake cleaner if I can get away with it. I'll take it under the hot running water, get a toothbrush with some soap, like dish soap, doesn't really matter, and scrub it. Just scrub every nick and, nook and cranny of it, rinse it out really good, take some compressed air, blow out all the water, put it in a hot area, dry it completely, Duracoat it. That's all you need to do with this and with the blade, the acid prep. Those are the Duracoated knives by Nut and Fancy. Extremely pleased with the results, every single one of them. As they wear and tear as we use them in the project, I may give you updates on it. I may not. <laughs> Just depends on what we got going here. I have so much on the TMP plate, it's not even funny. I think you guys know that. I think you guys know that. But I'm doing my best to keep you apprised of some cool products and knives, blades, guns, and cool stuff like Duracoat that can change the way your item looks and the way you feel about it and also its usefulness in your own philosophy of use. Thanks for tuning in. Nothing fancy with a Duracoated knife update. I remain busy in the, pro uh, the project and in the shop. Signing off. Thanks for all the support. See ya!